day started off just like any other day. A donut and coffee for breakfast, and now a short stroll to my next assignment. New York can be a beautiful place on a winter morning, and after three weeks of hunting in Canada's northwest, it looks particularly good. All the familiar sights. I had no idea I missed them so much. I hope he makes it. Here's the happy breed of Staten Islanders taking their usual ocean voyage to a time clock. And the Bronxites, tired before the day starts. Even the pigeons are clock punchers. Everybody but me. Cause Uncle Sam is my boss and 24 hours a day is my schedule. Official description, customs investigator Cliff Holden. Age 35, graduate University of Wisconsin. At the moment, sporting a new hat makes me look like a banker. Well, here we go. Now's the time. My vacation is officially over. It's good to get back. Yes, today. Uh, oh, hello, Cliff. I'll call you back. Come on in. Hi, Chief. Hi. Oh, yeah. You know, I was going to bring you back, the biggest moose head in all of Canada, but... Yes, I know, but you never got one. No. Got one? Didn't even see one. <laughs> Hi, Goldie. Good to see you. Cliff, I got a job for you. Oh, this is Martin of the Apex Insurance Company. Martin? Cliff, I've got a job that I wouldn't think of handing to anyone but you. When did this happen? Three weeks ago. How come I wasn't told? We tried, Cliff. We tried to get you everywhere. If it was a criminal of some sort, you'd have no trouble locating him. Boy, you can easy enough find a criminal. I Something don't know like this what more you can ask. All right. All right. I knew you'd want to handle the case. And find the complete facts leading up to Steve's murder in that file. Martin here is covering for the insurance company, and I might add at the moment he knows more about the case than we do. Well, now, on September 5th, our Paris office issued a policy insuring a necklace uh, bought by a Mrs. Lydia Brundage. Uh, is Mrs. Brundage wearing the necklace? Now, about two months later, uh, well, uh, November 12th to be exact, Mrs. Brundage reported the theft of this necklace in Cannes, France. What's that got to do with Steve? What's it got to do with him? The French authorities weren't able to get a smell of the crooks. So unless we come up with that necklace within the next couple of weeks, they have to plunk out 325,000 bucks to a Mrs. Lydia Brundage. Where does Steve fit in? This is how it measures. Somewhere along the line, your friend Steve picked up the trail of the necklace. It led him to a broken down hotel in Marseille. It was here that he set up an observation post in a room right next door to the crooks. Who was Steve after, Chief? We know that Steve Regan was after something and had found someone. But we had no report for him, or whatever he knew who died with him. At least we thought it did until a couple of days ago. A very bright boy in our Paris headquarters by the name of McQueen has been going over every foot of ground that Steve Regan covered. And he's found one thing, one name, on hotel registers and passenger lists. Wherever that name went, Steve Regan was sure to go. What name does the name go by? Matthew Royal. Ever hear him? Royal. Doesn't register. It will. You got a line on him? Nothing that would stand up in court for more than ten minutes. You think Royal's the guy that killed Steve, huh? We don't know that, Cliff, but he's the only decent lead we have to go by. But don't forget, your job is to stop that necklace from coming through. What about the killer? I don't think we'd mind if you worked on that, too, but don't forget, your job is the necklace. When do I start? Where do I start from? This came over the teletype a couple of hours ago. Royal Book Passage, United States, by a KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, the 29th. Signed McQueen. 29th? Right. What's day after tomorrow? Right, and I want you on that plane, Cliff. If you get out by tonight, you'll just about have time enough to make it. Now, here's your passport and your identification. As you see, you're William Hera, a private investigator. We've got an office, a telephone, and a private secretary named Helen. It's all there for you. Check it all around. It's your home and anyone else you're liable to run into. Uh, 
I know what Steve meant to you, Cliff. I know you were kids together and you went through a war together. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. I'll get him. One way or the other. Come on in, Manny. I have a homemade pot roast sandwich for you, Cliff. In Europe, you won't find Minnie Hoffman's cooking. Thank you, Manny. Say, what is this, a new style? <laughs> I don't know. You like it? Oh, yeah, nice, nice. No sales resistance. Well, I'm very glad, Cliff. I've been waiting for a chance to get rid of this old hat. Ah, uh, uh, no, 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 Minnie. That's, uh, that is my working hat. Well, let me tell you something, Cliff. It's about time it got retired. Minnie, you know, I think if I was just about ten years old... I here, know. I... You'd marry me. For ten years now, you've been telling me that. But do you ever do it? Never. Look at this messy packing. Well, I've just... That used to belong to Stevie. Good luck, Charlie, I used to call him. Yeah. He should have held on to him. He needed him more than I did. Oh, yes, yes, Minnie. Hide that picture somewhere. Clint, why don't you take a later airplane? I made such a wonderful supper for you tonight. Just put it on a slow fire, Minnie. I'll be back in three days. Three days? And you're taking all these clothes? Part of the act, you know. Oh, oh, oh. Minnie, if anybody should ask any questions, mm -hmm. I'm William Hera. Got an office and secretary. Well, it's all down on his card. You know, just like we've done before. Mm -hmm. And now, Minnie, Graham, I want to get dressed. Okay, Cliff. I mean, William. William Hara, 249 Nassau Street, New York City. Okay, get aboard. Monsieur William Hara, de New York. Merci, monsieur. Vos papiers sont tout en ordre. Change for a Frank McQueen? I think so, Mr. Harrow. Thanks. Don't mention it. Well, what's the door? Checked and rechecked all the passengers scheduled on this flight. They all seem okay. If Royal's got any friends on this plane, he's done a good job. He hasn't been out of our sight for three weeks. Anything else? I've got the seat right next to him on the plane. Is that the baby that's going to take us? Right. Flying Dutchman. Having the seat next to him ought to give me a chance to get nice and chummy with him. Yeah. Practically buddies. I'd like nothing better. Well, that's it. Flying Dutchman leaves in an hour. All I can say is be careful and don't underestimate him. Royal's a bad cookie. Thanks. Well, good nothing. I'll be seeing you. Excuse me. The binoculars. I would like to look through. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'll get it. Uh, let's go on here. Here. Uh, we'll fix you up. Money in here. There you are, on the house. What is that on the house? For free. Well, thank you. You speak English pretty well. Where'd you pick it up? The Americans were good teachers during the war. Since you come here, everybody speaks as good as, as well as I do. The Flieg and the Hollander. That's my plane. Frieder der Hollander. <laughs> we call it the Flying Dutchman. I know. You're leaving France, huh? Uh-huh. On tonight's flight? Mm -hmm. It's my first trip to America. I'm going to be married. Joe's his name. Congratulations. You will like my Joe. He's very funny. And very, very handsome, too. Okay, let's, uh, let's see his picture. Yeah. How did you know I have Joe's picture? Military secret. You're a big tease, mister. Mr. 
Doctor? Hera. Bill Hera. How do you do? I'm Kathy Van Born. Kathy Van Born, how do you do? Very well, thank you. It will be wonderful to be an American. Nice, yes. He arrives every week. Three years now. Three years? It's not his fault. You have such strict quarters. I'm lucky to go now. Some of my friends in Holland still wait. Oh, you're Dutch. I'm a Hollander. I beg your pardon. Do you live in New York? We haven't even established that I'm an American. You're not an American. No, you're teasing me again. Joe lives in New York. He says it's not a beautiful apartment, but it's a beautiful apartment. I know every foot of it. He described the house, the street. I can close my eyes and see it now. Hiya, Joe. How do you like my handiwork? Well, without even seeing it, I like it, Fat Jump. What is it? Hey, the big one. Yeah, you didn't know I was an artist, did you, Joe? Uh, no, I didn't. Say, thanks a lot, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll see you. Hey, I learned art in the camouflage battalion during the war. Oh? Yeah. I ain't worked since. Uh, Not much use for camouflage in civilian life. Ah, uh, you're telling me. You know, I only did it because I like to draw. Huh? Well, thanks a lot. Hey, yeah. Thanks a lot. I'll, I'll be seeing you. doing here? Hi, you bridegroom. We're your guests. Guests? Yeah, your guests. Who are you? Who, me? What are you doing with those immigration Hey, people? bridegroom, take it easy. Come here, look, we're just gonna, we're just gonna borrow them for a few days, that's all. So relax. Are you crazy? Give me the Take it easy, bridegroom. If you're liable to get hurt, and that wouldn't be nice. <laughs> the bridegroom. Come on, Bertie, get your coat on. Let's get out of here. I'm very lucky to get a fellow like Joe. Looks to me like Joe's pretty lucky guy himself. I think he's a lucky stiff. Stiff? Skip it. Skip it? Let's get aboard, shall we? Mr. Hennessy, I 
Cloud 15. Miss Randolph, Wall 35. Miss Van Boren, aisle 3. Mr. Harrow, aisle 3. Von Brugger, aisle 22. Mr. Von Brugger, wall 22. Mr. Royal, wall <laughs> Isn't it nice? You're sitting here too? So we can talk all the way over to America. Fine. <laughs> Friend of yours? Oh, I met him last week at the American Express office when I bought my ticket. He's an American too. We had a long talk while we were waiting. I can imagine who did the talking. You probably chewed his ear off. Me? Chewed his ear off? What is this? Sorry to bother you. That's quite all right. The way they shoot these things across the sky these days hardly gives you a chance to get to see for them. I do not understand this. Chewed his ear off. I never heard this before. Just an expression. Oh, yeah. Two two are together, big left chase. No, 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 no. no. Oh, thank you. Right. That would be very nice.
Johnny, what are we waiting for? Look, my friend, nothing leaves this field without an okay from immigrations, customs, and health. Yeah, but look, all right, we gotta... all right. Looking for something, gentlemen? And uh, while you're at it, take off your shoes. Papers, please. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do the girls see on thing? Yeah, that's great. Oh. Well, that one's papers seem to be all in order. Is it okay for them to uh, ride with her to the hospital? Okay by me. Not a thing. Not a single blessed thing. He's a smart bunny. Say, that ambulance. Cover it. If it's gone, get with it. Right. Well, good luck to both of you. Thanks.
the necklace. Hold it. Hurry up. Lady, you sick or trick of the week, and I fell for it. A phony conk on the head, a handy doctor, that bandage job, and right through customs comes a half a million bucks in jewelry. Where's Joe? Where's my Joe? Are you kidding? He's right in there where your friends left him. Joe! That's an act. You're terrific. I don't get it. Miss Van Bowen. Kathy. Kathy, look at me. Look at me. I'm your friend, believe me. I want to help you. But you've got to tell me one thing. What happened to that necklace? Necklace? How do you know? You can't tell me. You can't tell me. Stop it. Stop it. Listen to me. Listen to me, Kathy. I didn't kill him. It was somebody else. It was somebody I'd like to meet. I'm trying to help you. You've, you've got to believe that. But you've got to tell me what happened. Don't you understand? I'm, I, I want to help you, Kathy. They'll send you back home. What happened from the time you left me on that plane? I was in the passage bay. Someone in back of me. I turned around, but it was too late. Did you see who it was? No. It was too quick and too dark. I wake up. 
There was a man with a gun and a woman who... She was bending over me, doing something to the bandage on my head. There was a crash. Oh, I was frightened. And you found the necklace? Yes. Kathy, you, you do have that necklace now? Yes. I can only think of one thing. What is he, Joe? Do you know anybody else in this country? Do you know someone that you could go to? Nobody. And I'm afraid they'll send you home. In a couple of days. The man and the woman from the ambulance. Now, look, Kathy. I'm sending you to a friend of mine. Now, listen carefully. I'll be hung for this, I know. Now, go to this address and ask for Mrs. Hoffman. Mrs. Hoffman. Do you understand? Mrs. Hoffman. All right, take this card. And go you to want that. this? No, no. Now, you take that with you. Tell Mrs. Hoffman to hide it. All right, go on now. Be careful. had this thing working for you. I didn't want to shoot you. I wanted to meet you. The girl isn't here. Come on, talk, mister. She's got a hack outside waiting for her. Get over there. It's the girl. She's getting away. Now what are we going to do? Ah, shut up. Hera. Private investigator, huh? All right, Willie. Come on, make it easy on yourself. Where's the necklace, Willie? It's around my neck where I always wear it. Oh, only for crying out loud. Cops are going to be here anymore. Ah, shut up! All right, Willie, get up. Come on, get up. Yeah, I think I'm going to take you visiting. Wait a minute. Now just follow me out of here. Tell only to bring in our company, Augie. A rare pleasure, boss. A very rare pleasure. Oh, hello, Mr. Harrod. I didn't mean to keep you waiting. I don't mind. Augie, Mr. Harrow, and I are old friends. Fraternity brothers. Yeah? You look like an intelligent man, Mr. Harrow. I hope you know what you're doing. Got a pretty good idea. Good. I always admire a man who knows his own mind. Augie, I'm surprised that you're standing there like that. Mr. Harrow just got off the plane this morning. He needs a shave. Can't you see that? Pleasure. Uh, not, uh, not too close, Augie. Just, uh, just once over lightly. Good tip in it for you. This is only a hobby. Suppose you tell me, Mr. Hell. What's your angle? Angle? I've got no angles. Your, uh, pretty boy brought me here. What's your angle? You're not in a position to ask the questions. I, uh... Realize that. Uh, I think I will have a shine, boy. Why are you? Take it easy, Oli. I'm disappointed, Mr. Harrow. You're not as intelligent as I thought. Oh? About what? 
$350,000 worth of necklace. Oh, that's an awful lot of necklace. How do you figure yourself in this deal? Just trying to help a lady in distress. What lady? Well, you know her, our unfortunate fellow passenger. I heard about that uh, little accident with the ambulance. Where did you hear? Uh, oh, I get around. Uh, uh, brushless, please, uh, Augie. Mr. Harrow, won't you please be more cooperative? Only gets nervous. So I've noticed. Easy on it. You see? I must apologize, Mr. Harrow. I, I'll try to keep him under control. But suppose you answer my question. Where did you hear? I stopped off to see a friend of mine at the 47th Precinct. Uh, he's a sergeant. I, uh, I was there when the flash came in, so uh, I remembered a couple of things that the girl had told me, and putting them kind of together, I thought maybe she'd gone to her boyfriend's place, and I was right. And she had the necklace. Did she? Quit I stalling. Didn't. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you an offer. A little deal, see? You've got the girl, I've got you. We trade. You're talking to my bad ear. Oh, I'll fix that. Easy really? on it. Mr. Harrow, won't you please be more reasonable? All right. Turn over the girl and we'll split. 50-50. Hey! <laughs> working for. He doesn't fit. I don't know. Maybe the insurance company. No, Martin is the man. Yes, maybe you're right. Well, Matt, let me knock him off while I take come him on, more chances. Come on, Peter. Come no, on. No, he's our only lead to that girl. Come on. Wake up. Let's try again. Maybe he's ready to talk. Augie. Yeah? Did he come to? Yeah. Come on, you kid. Come on. Feel better, Mr. Harrow? I'm happy to see that. Come now. No hard feelings. You understand my concern, I'm sure. About your condition, I mean. I like you. Don't make it hard. What do you say? About what? My little proposition. Royal, I'd like to help you, but... Then you really don't know, huh? I want to believe you, Mr. Howe. I think I do, but I'd like to keep tabs on you anyhow, just in case. Where do you live? Any hotel that'll take me. What's your office telephone number? Beekman 93425. Call Investigation service. Checks. Tell her to hold the wire for a moment. Talk to her. Hold on, will you, sister? Helen, what's happening at the office? Not a thing, Mr. Carr. Are you coming in this afternoon? Are you coming in this afternoon? Answer. Well, that, uh, it all depends on what what happens, Helen. Hello. We've got a little bet on here. Bill says you can remember anything. Is he left-handed or right-handed? He's right-handed, of course, and I'll bet he needs a manicure. <laughs> You've got a good memory, all right. Any time you decide to change jobs, come over and work for me. Thanks, but this job is yeah. fine. All right. Get his wallet. All right, you're free to go now, Mr. Harron. Sorry if I've called you any convenience. Inconvenience it was. What about my gun? Give it to him. What's the matter, you nuts? Yeah. It's Carney. I told you not to call me here. Stop, Spencer. 
Gas just slipped out of his room. Oh, it's nothing, nothing. I'll go over to Gas's. He probably went there for a pint. And get right back. My gun? Give it to him, Oni. What's in my coat? Just don't follow me around anymore, buddy. And there's a tip for you. See you at the frat house, Roy. I said once over lightly, and brother, did I get it. What a business. Let a couple of punk hoodlums suck you around in the hope of getting a lead to something, and then when you get it, you gotta tramp all over town tracking it down. What's the break I was looking for overhearing that phone conversation? So, the doctor on the plane is in cahoots with Royal. It makes sense now, especially with Doc's background. Because according to Brandon, he started off like a flash and ended up without a scruple to his name. All because his wife died and he had an appetite for Benedictine. Yeah, I understand he was in Marseille about the time Steve was killed. No Garcia here. Well, if at first you don't succeed... At this rate, I'll have fallen arches before the week's out. 16,000 liquor stores in New York, and I'm looking for a guy called Garcia who knows a guy called Carney. Not much to work on, even if I do find him. Garcia to Carney to Doc Spencer. Triple play. Doc may be the one to help me prove that Royal murdered Steve. Well, here we go again. What's good? Running wild in the six. <laughs> What's good? Everything is good. Uh, it's special today. Should be a special. Mule swear, it's bad. Bad? Mister, there is good whiskey and better whiskey. There's no such thing as bad whiskey. How much you want to pay? But you don't sell much of this stuff. We don't sell much of anything right now. But lately I've been selling a little bit of it. What do you get for it? Seven dollars and ninety-eight cents. Ooh. Give me a bottle. I... Eight bucks. Say, I, uh, I saw Carney in here about a uh, half hour ago. Did he say where he was going? I think he went up to the hotel. Uh, say, are you a friend of Carney's? I ain't seen you around here before. Oh, I get around once in a while. Hey, you play the Gigi's? I take care of all the boys in the neighborhood. That's good to know. Track odds. baggage. That'll be a buck and a half in advance. A buck and a half? It says a buck outside. It also says up. A buck and a half. Room 2C. It 
Say, if, uh, if I want something, who do I ask for? Me? What's your name? Carney. me, pal. I live next door. Got a corkscrew? you, huh? No, go on, go on, take a shot. I'm just warning. That's good, huh? Go on, take another one. <laughs> Thanks. Here's another one. Here's Tria. I've seen you before. Yeah, I've seen you somewhere, too. Wait a minute. Aren't you Dr. Spencer? Terrace, that's where it was. Yeah, Terrace. Get around. <laughs> what? You're, a, you're a celebrity, a famous doctor. Wait a minute. Of course, you are Dr. Spencer. Why, well, you're one of the greatest surgeons in the world. Thanks. Well, I used to see you around Paris all the time, Doc. That's a great town, Paris. But were you ever in Marseille? That's a real spot for you. I was there. I was in Marseille just a couple of months ago, Doc. I, I met a fellow there by the name of Matty Royal. You ever hear of him? He's supposed to be a big shot. Big shot? Yeah, he, to he told me about a, about a deal that he had in jewelry. Almost a half a million bucks. That's being a big shot for my money. Big shot. Thief. Liar! Murderer, that's what he is, a murderer! Who'd he murder, Doc? Who'd he murder, Doc? Was it Steve Regan? Was it Steve Regan, Doc? Hey. A great doctor like you mixed up with a murderer like Royal. You're a disgrace to your profession. Give me a drink. You're a disgrace to the memory of your wife. Leave me alone! Who killed Steve Regan, Doc? Who stuck the knife into him? Was it Royal? Was it Royal, Doc? Did Royal do it, Doc? Yes, now leave me alone. Who else was in that room beside you two when Royal knocked him off, huh? No, leave Who me was alone. Royal trying to Fancy meeting you here, Miss Lara. Don't oh, rust up in here, Only Take him outside. Don't get lost. I got a big investment in this place. How do you get lost? What do you want? Get out of here. Shut your mouth, you drunken slobby old man. Drop the bottle, Mr. Harris. Drop it, I see. That's right. Turn around and back up. Turn around and back up. That's right. Come on, up, up, Mr. Harris.
She's got to do with this. This is real. I beg your pardon? This should help. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, it does. Feeling better? For a guy that should be dead, this isn't too bad. What's, uh, what's the score? I, I, what's the gimmick? Gimmick? That's right, and while I'm at it, a couple of usual questions. Where am I? What, what, what am I doing here, and who are you? A couple? That's three. I'm Lydia Brundage. This is my house. You were brought here by Mr. Matty Royal, and a gentleman I believe they call Oni. Only Oni is no gentleman. Lydia Brundage, the Brundage necklace, Brundage. Mm -mm. Mm, that's right. You say Royal and and and, and Oni had brought me here. That's right. Why? Mister Royal seems to think that you have my necklace, Mister Hara. Or if you haven't, you know where it is. Do you? What about another drink? I'd like to ask a few more questions, if you don't mind. I rather anticipated that. What is uh, your connection with Royal? It was in Paris, right after my necklace was stolen. He called in my hotel and introduced himself. He asked for an appointment, a private appointment. And uh, you saw him? He picked me up in a car and we drove around. He said he was acting as intermediary for the people who had my necklace. Oh, he offered to resell it back to you, huh? That's right. Go on. I asked him what was to prevent me from calling the police. And he laughed. He said that I think he was fool enough to carry the necklace around with him. That if I didn't want it to say so, there were plenty of others who did. How, uh, how much did he want for it? A quarter of a million dollars in cash. When I told him I didn't have that much money, that I'd have to go home and get it, he told me to go ahead, that he'd deliver in New York. That brings us up to you, Miss Sarah. I want that necklace. If you have it, or if you know where it is, I'll give you $100,000 for it with no questions asked. And I'll take care of Mr. Royal. Financially, of course. Mrs. Brundage. Yes? In the past... 48 hours, three, maybe four men have been killed because of that necklace. You still want it? I still want it, Mr. Harrow. You think I'm pretty callous, don't you? What, uh, what difference does my opinion make? I'm in this for what I can get out of it myself. Oddly enough, your opinion of me does matter. Do you resent that? Why should I? I'm human. I'm pretty human myself, Mr. Harris.
You would do uh, most anything to get that piece of jewelry back, wouldn't you? Practically. But don't underrate yourself, Mr. Harrah. I like this. What are you thinking? Well, I can only think of one thing at a time. Where do we go from here? That's up to you. I'll see you to the door. About that uh, trinket of yours, I'll uh, be in touch with you. investigation service. Helen, just checking in. Is anything new? The woman that rode in the ambulance with the Van Born girl is named Bertie Alton. The hot rod with them is Oni Shore. If you want him, he hangs out at a joint in the village called Rudy's. Rudy's, huh? Uh-huh. If you need anything, just whistle. I'll be here. Bye-bye. I got all the dope and no proof. I hope I didn't take all those beatings from that pipsqueak hoodlum for nothing. And that royal guy is as slippery as a piece of wet soap. Can't pin a thing on him. How do I trap him? What's the gimmick? What's the answer? I saw you when you came here. No. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll be downstairs if you need me for anything. Hmm? I'm glad you're feeling better. That's swell. Well, where'd you hide the uh, necklace? an odd underground trick to hide things from the Nazis. It's beautiful. Beautiful? I think it's a lousy piece of junk. Kill one of the finest guys that ever lived. Or is it Joe? Yes. I'm sorry, Kathy. The man from the ambulance with a gun. Have you arrested him? You mean Oni? No, no. We're just letting him go, hoping that he'll lead us to something. Oh, that's why you haven't arrested me. Do you think I will lead you to something, too? No. Then why haven't you? Cliff, why haven't you arrested me? Because I don't think you had anything to do with it. You were a patsy. Well, I do not understand it. Maybe they tried to kill me because I wanted to key necklace. If I thought for one moment... If you thought what? Benny! Benny! going out. Did you call me for something, Cliff? Yes, yes, Minnie. Where's Mildred? Where's Mildred? He's asking me where my Mildred is. Where she is every night, out with the boys. Kathy and Mildred about the same size, aren't they? Yeah. Minnie, I want you to get one of Mildred's dresses. A nice one now. Yeah? We're going out night clubbing. Night clubbing? 
Cliff, do you think she's up to it? Minnie, will you get one of the dresses? All right. I'll go upstairs with you and change. Kiss my baby. Do it now. Do it now. Oh, how I want to kiss my baby. Do it now. I just gotta hug and hold her before I get much older. Should I do it? Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Well, I want to sing and shout. Do it now. Do it now. Oh, how I want to sing and shout. Do it now. Well, I feel like righteous beat from my molars to my feet. Shall I do it? Do it now. Do it now. Well, I want to clap my hands. Do it now. Do it now. I got to clap my hands. Do it now. My soul is full of joy like a baby with a toy. Should I do it? Do it now. Do it now. Say, I got to blow my horn. Do it now. Do it now. I got to blow my horn. Do it now. Well, I want to blow my horn because I'm thankful I was born. Shall I do it? Do it now. Right now? Right now! Right now? Right now! Well, I'll do it! Do it! Do it! Do it now! Hiya, Willie, old boy. Come on over, Mike. So what do you say? Come on, it's on the house. Well, let's do it. Do it now! Let's go, baby. Come on, what a girl. Oh. Come on, sit down. Make yourselves at home. It's all on me, all on me. No hard feelings. Sure, sure, no hard feeling. Hey, you, get up. What's a big idea? I said get up. Yeah? Yeah, get up and get out of here. You see? Are you a wise guy? There's plenty of room. <laughs> this suits me fine. That makes it okay all around, I think. Okay. <laughs> oh, and I'm good, bro. <laughs> I'm not doing so bad myself. <laughs> hey, how's your job? What? You know, your jaw, your jaw. Brother, do you pack a wall? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't suppose anybody else knew about this place. You come around here much? How would you get here? I just about put this place on the map. Yeah, China. <laughs> you shut up. Hey, sweetie. What do you say you and me sort of go out tonight, huh? Yeah, we'll give the town a big roll and we'll... Four doubles. Here you are. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is on me. Now, you want to remember one thing. I'm the host. I want to keep the change. Thanks a lot. You're the best customer we've got. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you say? Here's to it, huh? Yeah. I guess you're out celebrating, too, huh? Huh? We certainly have got it coming to us. What are you talking about? Oh, come on now. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> What did you mean by that crack about celebrating? What's to celebrate? It's all right, you can talk in front of her. What's to celebrate? <laughs> the necklace. Didn't you know? Sure he does. I bet he's got plenty. Look level with me, pal. I'm not fooling anymore. What about the necklace? Royal got paid off. We made a deal with Brunnage Dame over four hours ago. Oh, oh, what did you do? Ah, shut up! I don't know what he told you, but he got paid off. Yeah. He got paid off. Smart guy. Let's go. Let's get some air.
But you see who it was, Minnie. Do you know who it was? Two men I never saw before. They hit me so hard. What can I do, Cliff? Nothing. I'll, uh, I'll call the doctor. Uh, Did you come right over here? There's been an accident. Yeah, bring an ambulance. At home, yes. Twelve. How you doing, Minnie? Oh, she's in terrible pain, Cliff. Well, the doctor will be right over now. Where are you going? Well, it would be foolish to put yourself in danger. What he is doing it for you. Let me worry about that. But Cliff, what, what can we do? Where will you be? Brandages. Brandages? Tonight you tricked the man to kill this Matty Royal, and now... There won't be any tears at his funeral. Don't go. Please don't go, Cliff. Oh. 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 Last time I was here, she gave me a drink. I don't think she'll be so happy about this visit. Guess I better not go in the front way and be announced. There's going to be a little party in me without an invitation. I'll throw a little party myself. I hope this is the payoff so I can get in a few licks. the deal now. Sure, sure, I know all about it. Three hours ago, you told me to blow town that the deal was off. Three hours ago, I didn't have the necklace. I've just got it now. If I'd wanted to double-cross you, I would have done a better job. Come on, it's now, Matt. Five thousand. You're paid off. Hey. Put the rest of it down. 
Put it down, Matt. That's right. Just a little extra road, that's all. Looks like uh, you're working for the customs department now. He's dead. Awfully dead, I hope. Well, you can check up another killing for the Brundage necklace. I had nothing to do with this. I was just trying to buy back my own property. Yeah. Yeah, maybe with your dough, you'll get out of it. I hope you enjoy those emeralds, Miss Brundage. A lot of other guys didn't. Thank you, Mr. Harrow. And I wouldn't dial if I were you. to uh, have someone care what happens to you. They found you, huh? Sorry, Cliff. We can't tamper with the immigration law. Uh, kind of sorry we can't, Chief. She's a good kid. Of course, if she were in somebody's custody. But... Oh, come on, let's get out of here. The boys will clean up. Uh, you better take care of that brood. You got these guys, huh? Yeah. They were watching the front way. I guess you came in the back, hmm? Five o'clock, and the big push starts in reverse. The Bronxites and Brooklynites chasing home for a hot meal and maybe a movie with a wife. The babysitter's phones must be ringing like mad. For me, it's just the end of one assignment and the beginning of another. Who knows, it may take me to Iceland or Peru. Well, it looks like I've taken on a part-time job. The immigration papers read, name, Kathy Van Born, age 24, nationality, Hollander, eyes brown, hair brown, placed in the custody of Mrs. Minnie Hoffman. She'll be close enough so I can keep an eye on her. It's a real swell little gal, Kathy. Maybe this won't be a part-time job after all. 